You're listening to another episode of Open Source CXO, the podcast designed to share insights on how to excel in your business using technology, regardless of the industry. Host Robert Kehoe is a self-taught software developer who has grown to the role of CEO. Renowned for his collaborations with organizations such as Stanford University, Nelnet, and Louis Vuitton, he continually seeks new challenges to conquer in the world of tech. Accompanying him is Don Blackburn, a veteran COO with over 25 years of experience in cultivating diverse relationships and driving innovation in various technical projects. Each week, they'll be sitting down with some of the nation's foremost technology leaders to develop an open source playbook, drawing from their firsthand experiences in the field. Let's talk some tech. Today, we're with Adam Kaler, who is CTO at Ottawa University uh, here in the Kansas City area, I guess. Right. Yep. A little bit outside the Kansas City area, but welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for, happen- for, for having me here and the opportunity today. No, no problem. Looking forward to this, this conversation because uh, I think I mentioned to you before that we haven't really had anybody from the university setting or nonprofit setting, mm-hmm. which I guess Ottawa is a nonprofit. Uh, but I thought I'd just kind of give you the floor to kind of speak a little bit about Ottawa for those that aren't familiar and, you know, what that looks like from an IT perspective. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, my name is Adam Kaler. I am CTO at, at OU. I've been – actually, I just passed my eight years. So the, the 1st of August was my was my eight-year work nice. anniversary. So, mm-hmm. that, so, uh, so yeah, so we, we, we do have um, our original campus, which I'm at in Ottawa, Kansas, right down the road on, on I-35. We also have three other campus locations. So we have one up here in the metro area. Uh, so we're actually moving to our, our Overland Park campus to Asperia, which used to be the, the, the Sprint World Headquarters. Oh, so, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. very nice. So we're, we're going through that. that that's that been a, a, a pretty fun process. I've done a, a number of, like, construction-type projects being at OU. I'll probably get into all that, all that stuff at some point. Uh, so we're moving there. We also have a campus outside of Milwaukee. I was just there a couple weeks ago. No kidding. Yeah, and then uh, w- one of the biggest projects I was a part of is launching our Arizona residential campus. So we are in surprise. We're actually right down the road from where the Rolls has spring training. So, Oh, well, that's cool. So, Did yeah. you get to, have you got to go out there? I have, and those are a blast. I mean, there's there's nothing like seeing a game at the K, right? I mean, yeah. it's, it's so much fun. But that... That feels like a little league field. Like everybody's right on on top of it. Like you're you're all right there. So it's it's it's, it's super fun. And of course, being out there in February is about the best weather you can imagine. So yeah. right. <laughs> so m- much better than at at, at home. So. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so yeah. So I've I've been there just about uh, eight years. I'm primarily over the the hardware side of, of IT. I started there as data center manager. Uh, so worked my way up and and took over the the help desk and kind of. Front end support, mm-hmm. um, so yeah, doing doing all those things. I, I worked, uh, I work, I work in parallel to our, our software team. They're kind of separate from the, the hardware side of IT, and then also our um, uh, let's see what they call it, academic tech. So basically, our learning management system. So for for students, they, they kind of manage all that, and a lot of our, our you guys faculty. built all that custom. Is that why you? Have like a, a software team? No. You guys built all the custom, or that Great was question. actually one of my questions. Sure. Is like, you know, what does the makeup of the team look like? Software developers at a university. I'm very curious about. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, so so for the, the hardware side, I think I got five or six full-time folks and then probably about three um, part-time and then a number of graduate assistants. So one of the programs that, that we really kind of dove into was we borrowed the idea from athletics. So we're, first of all, a little bit of context for our residential campuses. We're very heavily athletic. So probably 90% of our students are involved in some athletic competition or program, right? So that could be football, could be basketball, volleyball, beach volleyball, esports, right? Which I, I think we'll probably t- touch on, yeah, on some today. That sounds interesting. But oh, yeah. oh yeah. Yeah. It's 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 especially a deal, for so. university. I'm very curious about that, but we'll get into that. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So um so how how that that kind of functions for us is the is the support of those um specifically. So but the our 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 makeup of that is that's where I was going with that. I lost my train of thought. Sorry. So, yes, so to, to kind of we we pull that idea from ath- athletics is that after folks get done with their their undergrad degree, they can then get their master's degree, and that tuition is actually paid for in exchange for working for the institution, typically for a skill set. So, we initially had this idea of of kind of redoing our help desk because it was a it was high turnover. Really couldn't get folks to kind of stay in that role. So, um, so really work to utilize the, 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 the students who typically were, came from like a business degree or managing, uh, management information systems, computer science, 
and position those folks in, in a help desk role so they can really get some hands-on, real-world ex- experience. Um, the, the proof was in the pudding for us because in the first couple of years, uh, two students left before the degree was over <laughs> because they got full-time jobs oh, based nice. on what they did. So like, okay, well, we are really on to, on, on to something here. Uh, so and there's certainly a, a ebb and flow of that, right? So, But that's really kind of helped our, our staffing situation so our full-time folks can really focus on more project-driven things. Uh, when, when we have a... a full roster of folks who maybe were in, in computer science. So, and we're always working to kind of um, uh, establish and expand that program so we, we can have a, a better skill set for students as, as they come into that, that, that program. So that's something that's really a lot different for us in the educational setting is we, we can utilize students. Now, there's a number of institutions their whole help desk is actually for undergraduate students. Mm-hmm. Now we don't really have the population for that right yet, so knock on wood. No. Hopefully, some way, someday we do. That would that would be really cool. But but yeah, so there, there's some other places that that whole portion is done, and then the graduate actually do more project based work, which would be something to be great to get to. So are those grad assistant, technically grad assistant roles that yes. you pay for, right. okay, right. and then they get they make a decent living, right? You pay them. So that they can continue to take classes, and I'm guessing, oh, you you give them free tuition. Yes, right. okay. yeah. So that's that's kind of the the rub, if you will, right? So okay. that's that, that that's what they're they're getting out of it. Uh, and you know, there's especially in in the IT field, that's something that you don't see a lot of advanced degrees. Uh, so that that really kind of helps set those folks apart when they go out to get a job. I so, gotcha, gotcha. So yeah, so that that that's, that's primarily what our, our our team does. Of course, lots of support help us tickets, making sure the Wi-Fi is up, right? That 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 sort of thing. On the the software side of the house. Primarily, it's really in support of of our ERP. So that so in um, within high, well with ed- education in general, you typically I mean you, you have your ERP which does a, a number of things, but you have your student information system, which is really kind of your core product, right? So it's going to house attendance, it's going to house grades, transcripts, registrar stuff, right? Mm-hmm. So and then the ERP typically is built has other fringe products built around that. Mm-hmm. So the idea is to have that obviously has has um, integrated as it can possibly be. So we we the, the, that team does a fair amount of custom development, but not really as, as much as you would see other other So it's probably like off the shelf ERP then or something yeah. that you guys have customized and just integrated with other products? Well we're so we're we're, we're migrating our ERP solution to a a, a um, new one within the, the the same vendor. The interesting part about this, at least I find this interesting, we originally implemented this back in the in 1990s. Oh. It was a very open code, right? So the, we really had kind of full keys to the kingdom. And there's been a number of extremely talented developers come through OU over the years. And so they would really customize that source code to kind of meet the needs of, 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 of the institution. Now, that is great until those folks leave. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? nobody's there. Yeah. Right, and then you go back to the to, to the the provider of the solution, they really can't support us. So that, that kind of helped tell the story of, of why we kind of go for more of the, the off-the-shelf type. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Type of solution. So that, and then uh, for our academic tech side, like I said, that's really supporting our Blackboard system, which is where folks take courses and they take tests and that, and, and, and that sort of thing. So it's a, it's, more of a specialized and focused help desk is really the the formation of that. There is a reporting aspect. So there's like a, a low-level business um, intelligence. Not, not I mean, it's difficult. It's complex. But it's just not not quite the um, the focal point as, as, as other departments. Gotcha. That makes sense. Yeah. Interesting. What, uh, so one of the things that you and I talked about mm-hmm. that was a little bit unique, I thought, uh, and and now that I've done a little research into it, it's not that unique, is the governance committee. Now, you you set that up. Is that correct? Yeah. So that that was actually, that was a part of our, our um, strategic plan. So we have a new chancellor as of 2021. Um, and Bill, he, he started a strategic planning process. And so I was lucky enough in 21 was when I was promoted to CTO to, to be a part of, of that at the very beginning to help kind of um, formulate where the, the institution should go. Obviously, in a post-COVID environment, higher ed and just education in general is substantially different. So there needs to be a more focus on, on equity for students in terms of how they can take classes, uh, you know, in-person, remote learning, hybrid learning. Uh, there's there's all, all kinds of different um, nomenclature Around that, so trying to to right size all all um, all of those portions, and then the 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 gift giving aspect. 
but there was a substantial focus on the, the operational efficiency within the institution. So because we have all the, the, the different lo locations, things can become kind of a little siloed. And, and certainly isn't from malintent from anyone, right? It's just as you're separated geographically, um, those things can, can kind of happen from, from time to time. So there was a, a concerted effort to, to, be, uh, to, to really appear as one, one institution, one university. And so I was co-chair of that. And then out of that, we decided that we really needed this tech governance um, uh, process. And, and, and so really, if, if I had to define it, um, to me, technology governance is a workflow that, that we work through to determine what solutions that we are going to implement for the institution. So it's, it's check boxes. Because of that, that siloed nature, unfortunately, there were some things that were um, brought to the to the university and, and paid for, maybe didn't have the, the full buy-in from it from everyone. And this isn't just OU, this is everybody, right? Mm -hmm. this, this stuff happens everywhere of, of oh, we, we bought this new thing, by the way, can you, you know, integrate this portion from, from, from an API or whatever, right? Yeah. So, so I, I think that stuff really happens everywhere, but this is really a concerted effort um, to, 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 to look at that and make sure everyone is aware of these solutions as we, as we put those in place. So you kind of formed it. So it is IT specific. That was going to be the other thing is you're, you're kind of, it's a little bit broad, but mostly yeah. IT. It's <laughs> mostly the software and hardware uh, and making sure everybody's on the same page. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we, we, we certainly, you know, we, the, the projects that come in specific, I'd say 90% of them so far have been software specific. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they have uh, some certain function. There, there are some IT specific things that we work through, right? Is it compatible with our system? Do we have something that that kind of works like it? Which is something as, as a CTO, I never really thought would be a part of my job. But uh, internalizing technology um, evangelism, right? W which is just talking about what we have and what solutions we have. And so that's kind of the the, the time and place. And somebody comes in something, you know, with some kind of solution. I say, well this is great, but we have something that gets us 80% of the way there. How can we supplement that other 20%? Uh, so, and that might be a custom development, right? It might be a third-party solution, not quite what they what what they have submitted for approval, right? Mm -hmm. um, so now I I will say the we we really try to have a pretty wide range of folks on on this um, committee uh, to, to really um, understand the full impact. Uh, and so be because of that, we we are tech governance, but it's really kind of moving into more of a operational governance standpoint of, you know, does this really work for us? Does this upset the, the apple cart for an another campus? Right. So I was going to ask, how yeah. big is this committee? So I, th I think we're about 12 folks. Um, okay. Yeah. So you're going to try to get 12 people to agree, huh? <laughs> Sounds well, fun. well, uh, seven, oh. <laughs> seven of them, right? Oh, okay, <laughs> right. Majority. Just majority rules. <laughs> majority rules, yeah. So, and uh, at, at at the end of the day, the, the the tech governance itself doesn't really make a decision, right? So we we make a recommendation that we pass on to our chancellor, and then so there there's some things that we don't really gauge on, like finances, right? But it's our job to collect that information. So we have to understand how financially this impacts the institution, and then pass that stuff on in a nice little. little so little one of my picture. questions was. Who brings these needs to the committee? Like who, I understand procurement's probably involved in, in all this, obviously, but who, I've always kind of wondered, okay, let's say you have a need or somebody decide, who decides they have a need? You guys mentioned that you had a software that you're using since the 90s mm -hmm. and you're, you know, migrating over to a new one. Who, who, who brought that need up? Great, great question. Uh, well, some sometimes, okay. right, right. So, so I, I would say our our director of of our software team. She's been there for twenty years plus, and and so you know, she she really had her um, finger on the pulse of that. So okay. uh, I, I would say um, specifically the, the ERP. It was more of especially with the strategic plan stepping back and saying, okay, where are we at from an overall technical landscape? And and that's one thing that's really improved. I, I feel like in um, just higher ed in general. Uh, I, I think there was a, a statistic I saw from Educause the other day that prior to COVID, only about 15 to 20% of president or chancellor cabinets had technical folks on that, that cabinet to help kind of drive the strategic making process. That's so interesting. Yeah. And it's like, how, how can you be, you know, tech forward if most of the people 
you know, you're having recommendations by people who are technically not that technical. So <laughs> right. it seems like a very, like you're having recommendations, what it seems like almost from anybody. Mm-hmm. Um, like, oh, just a random idea. We need, to, we need to do this. We need to upgrade this. And then it just becomes right. something that just gets presented in front of the committee then? Is that how that works? Yeah, yeah. And so okay. and, and the, 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 that, that, that portion of it, so pre-COVID, it was like 15 20%, right? Post-COVID, it's over 60%. So I, I, there's been a definite shift. Now, I, now this is kind of a rabbit hole, but I, I think the next iteration of that is information security, right? So that, that's going to have a place at that strategic level decision making. Yeah, right? sure. So, uh, so very, uh, you know, I was very pleased to, to see that it was, we really took a step back and said, okay, from a technical standpoint and from an operational standpoint, because to me, that's kind of a fine line, right? Mm-hmm. Technology operations, obviously, you guys, right? Right, right. <laughs> so so the, those things have to work together and kind of coexist. Mm-hmm. So I I, uh, I do think we took a look at that and said, okay, let's take a snapshot of where we are from technology. And there was really, there was one like Visio diagram that our director of, of software that she put together that looked like a maze of all the different solutions that they had to integrate with. Oh my we goodness. Went, Oh, geez. Yeah. I think there's something wrong here. So we, we also found that there were a, a few things like our, our, our CRM where the support contract on those was more than our ERP support contract. We went, Wait a minute. This is kind of backwards, right? So so it needed to kind of right size and, and kind of bring more things in-house. One thing I said to our board was it would really behoove OU to play in that sandbox. It was great for years that we can kind of, kind of could kind of customize and, and, and be different. Because the, the way the tech's moving to the cloud, right, and everything, especially mm-hmm. in the, the, the higher end sphere, for us to kind of play within those guardrails, I think, would be much more helpful for us. to. Are, are universities right. different? Like, I would imagine mm-hmm. most universities might even use the same software. <clears throat> is it is it not true? Or do, do you guys have any specific unique needs that are different than any, any other university that you need custom software for? Or is it just... Is it just a matter of people deciding, hey, I like this software better than this other software, and that's what creates the sort of custom aspect to this? Great question. So it it to me, it it kind of plays into what the the differences are. So to me, there's really for for um, higher ed altogether, there's really three different buckets, right? So there are public institutions, KU, K State, Emporia State, right? So those are funded by the state, but they're well, they're partially subsidized by the state, but then also just tuition from, from students, right? So then you have uh, private schools, which are nonprofit, and that's like OU. Typically, they're backed by a church or some kind of other nonprofit entity, right? Mm-hmm. Um, then you have you have private for-profit institutions. So that's like a DeVry, right? So right. folks that, and they, they typically hyper-focus on um, certifications. Uh, I think a Cleveland Chiropractic was, I think, a for-profit for a while, but I think they've they went through some organizational changes here um, a while back, um, so that that's that's really kind of the, the 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 differences that we find. And so some of that stuff is going to be based about about what type of solution you have. So for example, the company that we purchased our ERP software from that we are we migrating from into the same company but a different solution, <laughs> um, they actually have one that's more right size for I'll say medical schools that are maybe doing more nurse training, right? Okay. That, that's specifically what, what they do. Um, so some of that stuff is, is based on the individual niche inside of, that's fair. of, yeah. of, of higher ed. But, but there's no there's, like general education type of university platform. Not, not really. I mean, there's, there's a, a few Product of idea the heavy hitters. Yeah. <laughs> <about it later. laughs> no. Well, it's, so we were, we were talking earlier about like the, the whole idea of academic tech, right? And, and so, and, and how you support students. For a little while, it looked like Microsoft was, was going that route. So um, one of my old bosses at the uh, K-12 that I used to work at actually went to work in the education sector within Microsoft. He's in Houston now, I, th- I think. Uh, but there, there was a substantial push to really turn Microsoft Teams and OneNote, at least it seemed to me on the outside, to turn it into a learning management system, mm-hmm. right? So there's a, a number of, uh, of uh, I wouldn't say custom, they're, they're actually they're add-on modules from Microsoft that link up all that information back to your SIS. So that way all the, the grades can post each, each way. And it's, it's about these companies trying to get more into, into the actual ecosystem of, of the students because... As we learned from when we were kids, you know, we, we all had Macs. So mm-hmm. a, a lot of Apple Mac users, well, I, I think, came from 
playing Oregon Trail in third grade. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so yeah, so that, that's where I, I think a lot of that, that, that software comes from. There's, there's a few heavy hitters. Um, Oracle's in that space now, um, mm-hmm. but that's like KU and above. <laughs> right. so, 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 yeah, we're, we're probably about 3,000 students, so we're, we're not in that, in, that, in that ecosphere, right? Gotcha. So, I have noticed that. My, my daughter's been at a couple of universities. She's in grad school now, uh-huh. and it, everywhere it's been heavy Microsoft, mm-hmm. right? You, you, you get free Microsoft Suite as a student, and, you know, everything right. from email to it's always Microsoft. Right. And All that, the way the, down. Yeah, there, there's still there's, there's a, a big push for, for Google, especially if folks came from more of the, the K-12. So I, I worked in K-12 for about four years. I've, I've been in higher ed for about eight. There's certainly more Google in K-12. There's more Microsoft in, in higher ed. And a part of that, huh. it feels like that I think they're they're prepping more for the real world, which is primarily Microsoft. Right. So. Psh, pish, posh. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's true. <laughs> boo, Microsoft, boo. <laughs> so I am very curious, though, considering that you guys don't have really custom platforms, can you give me sort of an idea of what, why do you need developers? What, what do you develop? Sure. So the, the developer is that the, the developers we have on staff are really more about supporting the, the, the ERP function. So, and it's at, so like right now our existing one is all Unix based. So the, our lead senior developer is a Unix guy, right? And so he, he worked at a different spot here in, in, in case he ran a number of different Linux servers. So kind of getting that, that data out of there and understanding how that, how that mechanics works is different than your typical sysadmin, at least what we found okay. in our, in our, in our hiring so strategy. the software the software that you guys use store the data locally mm-hmm. on your mm-hmm. servers and yep. you guys write software to kind of extract the data write reports and all that is that right is, do I understand that correctly yeah. okay yeah that makes sense okay right. so, so the, you're not really necessarily working with the software unless you're probably integrating that but you probably just integrate it from a straight from the from the database perspective somewhere else if you needed to but um, right and to me what's really interesting about this get, getting into the higher ed eight eight or so years ago uh, is that there are some functions that we can't customize and are actually not allowed to. So, for example, there's software from the federal government for um, financial aid and, and student loans. Mm-hmm. You have to download that software f- from them to, to pull the data out in a very certain way so everything's uniform. Gotcha. Um, there was a huge mess earlier this year. I'm, I'm not sure if you guys saw that news, but uh, the, the FAFSA pro- process basically broke. Oh. Right? Uh, and, and so basically— uh, Around January, February timeframe, when folks were really starting to uh, apply to schools, high school seniors and stuff, no one could, uh, and so that, that that stuff was delayed by about a month, and that caused a lot of chaos. Wow. Okay. So yeah, and and so that's just um, you know, there's there's a lot of politics that that, that go in that that are well over my head, and I like to keep that over my head. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely, so, for sure. <laughs> okay. Um, Very familiar with the FAFSA. It, yeah. And once your kids get into the college stuff, you'll know all about FAFSA because that's right. right. That's where you live. Yeah. Right. So it's, it's an ordeal. Yeah. Well, one, my uh, one of my good friends actually, he works for Austin P, and uh, he's not a CTO level or anything over there. But one thing that that I've heard him kind of talk about a little bit is it's like, oh, we made you, we made this cool product, and you know, we did all this, and we would go to these. They would actually go to some of these conventions, I guess, and kind of you know. Have other schools try and use the product or whatever. Do you guys do a lot of innovating, or, or you know, do you have the opportunity? And, and again, it could be in your different types of universities. I get that, right? Um, but I'm curious, you know, the the ability to innovate within, I guess, uh, the the university. Right. So I, that's something we'd like to, to get to, and really, I I'd like to see that be student led. So uh, I've mentored a c- couple students and and taught their so our come back up. Sorry. So I've mentored a couple students and been a part of their practicum process, which has helped them to develop a, a, uh, some kind of software or solution. We had one um, that, you know, she wanted to create a room scheduling software. So we, we took a Raspberry Pi, put a touch screen on there and kind of mocked up See, what it would look that's like. That's fun. Yeah, right, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's, it's very, it's very, I mean, it's not super low tech, but it's, it's certainly, we can't go to market with that. Yeah. But it certainly, it just gets gets those students thinking creatively mm-hmm. and really combining the business aspect. So we have a pretty heavy um, business and management program. So really want to get folks in that modality and how that that that, that kind of um, creation can happen. Now, I'd, I'd love to see our computer science and computer science um, uh, and just 
tech students in general attend more hackathons, right? And 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 get into that aspect of it. You know, we're still kind of growing that that uh, that. that what, are, what are some of the drop? What? Why haven't you guys done that? Yet? Is it just budget constraints or or just logistics of it all? Or yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so budget, time, people, projects, right? Gotcha. Those, 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 Fair those, enough. Those kind of.